Hey, welcome everyone. I'm just making a quick video of the uh, FPV Raptor that I've built. As you can see, there are some uh, non-standard, well, as you will see, there are some non-standard features on it. I've played with the um, stickers a bit because I didn't like the standard uh, setup. Now, I've made my own camera bracket. If you have a look at the Chinese videos, they actually come with a little camera um, that's pretty much crap. But um, I ordered one at the same time for about 11 bucks. And all I really got out of it was one crappy run, and uh, I did that on my AXN, and it didn't really float my boat as far as camera quality was concerned. So I didn't bother too much with using it anymore. But the mount for that actually has a uh, dampening pad for vibration and uh, also has some pretty good little custom made screw holes and links and whatnot so uh, I've used that to fix the camera in fixed position at the moment the reason for that is that I've got a Fataba 10 CG radio however I have an 8 channel um, receiver and the problem therein lies that I need six channels to run the AP and uh, sorry the autopilot and uh, I need one channel for the um, power to go into the receiver and I have flaps on this aircraft as you'll see there are the flaps there and the ailerons there so what I have to do because this is a S bus receiver which is a Fataba innovation I'm going to actually purchase this week an S-Bus um, converter and uh, the little bits and pieces that come with it just so that I can connect the pan and tilt camera that I've made um, to it. I have two cameras and uh, I can connect them to it and thankfully I'll be in a position then to be able to pan and tilt as well. So uh, I'll just take a bit of a break and I'll open up the canopy and show you, take the wings off and show you how I've fitted everything inside and uh, hopefully some of you that are having some struggle or would like some ideas, it might help out. Okay, I'll be back shortly. Okay, back on again. Now for those of you familiar with this aircraft, I've taken the wings off but I've actually put the uh, uh, wing canopy cover on. Um, I just want to show you this rubber band here that goes between a couple of nuts, a couple of bolts, sorry, or screws that I put one each side and they're actually in existing holes from where the black canopy clips on. Now the black canopy for the FPV Raptor actually has a dual feature. Um, it obviously provides aerodynamicity and well, aesthetics but it also, uh, because of where it clips in on the fuselage, it also keeps this canopy secured to the aircraft. And what has been reported by many people over uh, the last couple of years is that if there isn't some sort of uh, secure way of holding this aspect of it down, the uh, thing lifts. It comes out at the back here because there's nothing to hold it in flies off, you lose your balance, your COG, and your plane ends up in the dirt very quickly. Um, also, as you'll see when I lift this off, when that does come off, there are huge, even though the, the wings would be there in that place, um, there's a huge hole there and that just creates a massive amount of drag and takes everything in a very nasty direction. So here we are inside the fuse. Now there's a 1300 milliamp dual sky battery that runs the Hornet OSD which is located up there and that's something I wanted to point out before I took this off. Um, traditionally I think that place is one place you can put a uh, transmitter and the antenna can obviously pop out the top there. Um, but I've noticed in my trials that the Hornet OSD does actually get quite warm. So I've decided to put that up there uh, for two reasons. One, there's a data card in the side here, and um, you probably won't see that very well on the video because it's all black, but there's a data card in the side there, and basically uh, to extrapolate the information from that, I wanted to have it easily accessible. 
Now this is a 5,800 milliamp Zippy battery. Um, I'm hoping to get obviously a, a lot of flight time with that. Um, and uh, it's quite heavy so it's mounted quite far back as you can see. It goes right back to where the RX is located. And the RX is actually located uh, directly, almost directly underneath the, um, the wing pod. Now, if we go to the top, I've spent a lot of time here. And those of you that have this aircraft will note where the um, servos and everything mount. There's a lot of uh, plywood there and it's quite good quality. Um, it's been well fixed and it's been well uh, designed. But obviously to keep it structurally light, there's a lot of holes and whatnot cut out of it. Now what that does is prevent you from being able to adequately lodge your FY31 AP system. So what I did was I went down to the local craft store and purchased a uh, piece of wood that's used for placemats. If any of you have the wooden backed placemats that have like a picture printed on top or whatever, um, exactly the same material, I think it cost a couple of dollars and um, put you in a position of being able to work with that. It's light, uh, it's very strong, and uh, it'll take quite a bit of punishment. So from that perspective, I, uh, I basically fitted the receiver, which is at the front of the AP30, uh, the FY31 AP, it's up here, and uh, everything runs into that, and all of the wiring is quite neatly out of the way. Now just remove this, this is actually the lighting module because there's lights on this, there's a, as I mentioned previously, there's a beacon up top and underneath. Uh, in the wings I've got forward looking LED spotlights and strobes as well as navigational lights. Um, you'll see the power cable, the red cable here, it's actually the power cable for the transmitter. That won't be left in that position, it will be tucked away underneath, I've got to extend that wire some. Um, this switch up here controls all of the receiver, the AP31, uh, the FY31 AP, I keep stuffing that up, and also sends power to the uh, UBEC, which supplies to the lights and to the receiver. So basically everything is in a nice neat little uh, nest there, and I've screwed that board down in four places, one on each side of the AP in the middle, and one on each side of the AP down at the back. Now the AP is actually mounted dead center of the center of gravity marks and with the battery in that position and that small battery in the position it's in it's slightly nose heavy which is always preferred with a aircraft such as this and uh, it actually balances very very well. I haven't weighed it yet but I would suggest it's between one and a half and 1.75 kilos so it's quite a heavy aircraft, but that said, the power plant on this and the prop is, uh, is very, very good. And once it's up there with the two meter wingspan, um, these things tend to have a very good ability to glide. Um, I don't really have a lot more I can share with you about this. I'm going to do some other small modifications and uh, obviously getting ready to test run. I've got the ESC mounted up there because there's a, as you would have seen, uh, there's a tunnel of air that goes down and through the uh, the top of the aircraft over the wings and into the motor tower. So hopefully that's going to remain cool enough. If it doesn't, then I'll need to rethink that and see what we do from there. Um, ultimately, I'm quite happy with this. It's been several months getting it all together and I had some difficulties with some of the planning aspects and I just got to a point as you do sometimes with projects where I put it down for a while and uh, left it. Then I came back with fresh eyes, had a look at it and things just started to fall into place. And the next thing that I have is, uh, is the pole that I've shown some of you before. I actually made this up myself uh, with the exception of the antennas. Obviously I purchased them from Fat Shark, I actually got them from Hobby King for cheaper than I could get them for anywhere else. And the uh, 5.8 helical uh, antenna, that's a, a 12 decibel, a 12 dBi, sorry, or a uh, 10 dBi, I can't recall now, a 6.5 turn anyway. Um, 
It's a dual diversity receiver and it has an antenna tracking function on it, but I won't be using that, I don't think I'll need it. And uh, yeah, I got the CP, oh, sorry, the helical from uh, Circular Wireless, and they're actually at Circular, then Dash, or a, uh, what do you call that? Uh, anyway, circularwireless.com with the dash in the middle, not the underscore, the other one. And uh, yeah, I also have somewhere here amongst my junk and the little DVD recorder that sits onto here and it all connects up to this wiring which all is mounted inside the tubing as you'll see there is no wiring outside of the tubing other than up the top here and I'll look to clean that nest up a little bit at some point but um, as you can see everything's quite neat and tidy and and uh, quite well away from harm so the next thing that I'm going to be doing is putting it all together and making sure it all works, doing some final bench testing. I have had the um, uh, FY31AP and Hornet OSD working as you'll see in my previous video and now I'm going to put it all together. I'm actually going to mount a little cockpit image on the front of the uh, camera there so that we've got a, a little bit of scenery and also because the top of this is white I'm a bit concerned about glare and sun reflection, so I'm hoping that that'll actually create a shadow over that area uh, when we're flying into the sun and therefore reduce that. But these Sony 600 TV line cameras are excellent as far as uh, light management is concerned. Again, I'll give them a plug because they are great. Uh, Model Flight here in South Australia, uh, modelflight.com.au. Uh, they're at Goodwood and also located out at Lonsdale, their main warehouse. Uh, the guys are great there, great information if you become a regular customer. They even look after you with some uh, pretty reasonable discounts from time to time. And before I get any smart aleck comments as happened before, no I don't want to work there, no I'm not getting paid for this. And uh, I'm just grateful for the fact that they do look after me as much as they do. So uh, if that's too hard for you to take my friend, don't bother commenting. Anyway, there we go, that's the look. I'm going to buy, I should say and mention, I'm going to buy a 200 milliwatt uh, transmitter for the video and I'm also going to buy a, another right angle plug for there so that I can straighten that uh, CP antenna out. Um, but basically I'm going to buy the 200 milliwatt because that's 600 milliwatt and I did notice that it puts a huge drain on the battery and I'm going to be running that from the main battery because I did run it from one of my... Uh, Park zone batteries that I got with my striker that's up on the wall there, and unfortunately, I killed it. The battery drained a lot faster than I thought it would, and by the time I realised, the screen had gone blank and the damage was done. Alright, I'll stop interfering with your day. I hope that you've all gotten something from this. I've certainly learned a whole lot. And if you have any questions, post them. Um, feel free to ask whatever you need to ask. I am going to make a video about putting together the FY31AP uh, Auto Pilot Stabilization System and the Hornet OSD because uh, although there are some around, I think that a, a really quick pictorial explanation of this goes here in step-by-step -step form would be something that would have helped me get finished sooner and it might help somebody else who hasn't had anything to do with this. Please bear in mind, I've been in this hobby since February this year, um, and I feel I've come a long way, and I'm really enjoying myself. So anybody who's looking to get into uh, FPV or just flying RC planes, uh, go and have a look at uh, www.rcmodelreviews.com, Bruce Simpson's site there. Have a look, check it out. He's got some great information, some great reviews, and uh, he also has the XJet channel on YouTube as well as the uh, RC Model Reviews channel. So please go along, have a look at Bruce's stuff. He's got some great information. If you're getting into it, buy an AXN. He's got three step-by-step -step build videos that will teach you everything you need to know. Okay, I'll leave you with your day. Thank you very much for sitting and don't forget to hit the like button.